Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel here on Operation RV. As the title has it, today is gonna to be an awesome video on my next uh, turbo build series here. We are boost referencing a carb, but not just your standard holly carbs that you probably see out there. I'm gonna be using the Hangar 18 approach that you can find online, which I'll place down there in the comments section. But I'm gonna be doing this on an Autolite two barrel, which is pretty much the same thing as the Motocraft uh, 2150. This is an Autolite 2150. I'll be using the uh, Hangar 18 approach, but I will be changing a few little concepts. So if you got a two barrel out there and you come to this, this channel and you wanna see some ideas on how this can get done because I can't find anything out there, then look no further because today I'm going to show you what, I've, what I'm going to be doing here to boost reference my two barrel carb. Stick around. Okay, so an important piece of a blow through carb here, especially a two barrel, is you wanna have a carb spacer, velocity stack. I know there's some other terms out here what they call these, but you wanna get one of these because it's gonna help with the airflow as it goes down uh, over the carb hat into the actual carburetor itself. It gives it a two inch uh, in length expansion for air travel. So definitely pick one of those up this can be extremely helpful. Um, here, what I want to do is the first step in making a boof, boost reference carb um, is whatever is inside of your floats here, if they're bla uh, brass or plastic, they need to be switched out uh, for the, uh, the nitrofill floats. Okay, here's the nitrofill float I picked up at my local auto parts store it cost me about 12 bucks and again this is for the 2150 float and there's the part number right there just a very quick disclaimer so I'm not gonna be running you know 12 to 18 20 pounds of boost uh, in this apparatus mainly 6 to 10 10 if that so there will be a few things I won't be using in the hangar 18 approach that you, you'll find the link down there in my description uh, because a lot of it is not necessary. Uh, first and foremost, um, changing out the nitro fill float, that is the number one thing you do need because under boost pressure, uh, the plastic and the brass ones inside your float bowls will actually crush. The other reason is up underneath here, I'll show you in a little bit, is your uh, power valve. And there are boost reference power valves out there, but considering I'm doing minimal amount of boost, there's even information on forums that you don't have to do anything in the Hangar 18 on a two barrel carb, aside from switching out your nitro fuel float, just because the boost is very minimal. However, I'll be doing most of them, but I won't be changing the um, the actual um, the boost port yet. I want to wait till after I get my air fuel ratio gauge, get it installed and running, and then I'll go from there. Just real quick, a few things I will be doing today. I will be changing the float out. Uh, we will be uh, removing the choke plate and the choke rod. Over here, we will be using some JB Weld and blocking up this hole here for vacuum because uh, once that carb hat is on, you want all these surfaces here that won't leak out into the uh, atmospheric pressure to be lost. So that will be plugged. Um, I will, at some point, probably after I get my air fuel ratio gauge, uh, go ahead and mill down some of these areas here. 
so we get a better airflow uh, once the boost gets there. And then also here on the on the air horns, I'll be adding um, some tubing here that actually helps once you get your carb hat on, it helps with the pressure getting down inside your carb to get a better flow. So one thing here inside your accelerator pump, there will be an actual piece of rubber uh, that is under vacuum that works when this is a naturally aspirated carb. I will be taking that out as well. So these are only the few modifications I'll be doing using the Hangar 18 approach. Uh, there are a, f a lot more out there because they're using it on the, the Holly double pumpers, the 350s and etc. So stick around, let's get this done. Lastly, inside the actual bowl here are the jets. Uh, I'm gonna keep these the same uh, until I get it fired up. And if so, then I'll go ahead and, um, you know, I'll put some bigger jets in there. But for, for right now, I'll go ahead and leave these uh, stock ones currently in place. First, go ahead and break the, the screw here off the actual choke plate. What this does is that the arm here maneuvers the actual choke when it's cold and drops down when it gets warm. So go ahead and back out the screw here and bear with me on doing this one-handed. All right, there's the screw. And go ahead and take off the plate here and then the arm just drops down, just like that. So now I'm gonna use a, a, fill, or a straight here, take off these six and remove the top. All right, get all six of these broken off now, and they are, and unplug that vacuum port there. And we're ready, we should be ready for a liftoff. All right, there it comes. And she's off. Fairly easy. Let's get a more in depth of you here, what takes place. All right, so we're looking down into the carb here and this little spring that goes around that little valve right here, you need to take a screwdriver, stick it down in there and pry it off of that. And then the float will actually come free here on this little, this brass pin. All right, and when you pry that off that bar, it'll look like this. And you simply can just pull out the float here just like that and it's out now it's just as simple of switching it out all right so go ahead and uh, we're gonna take this little pin off right here and slide this off the bar and then we're gonna put the uh, the new nitrofill which is here right back on the bar here and I got visited here by the horses. Hey guys. Yeah, they don't want to help me work on cars today. Uh, you want to make sure all the orientation is just like you pull it out. And as you can see right there. So let's get it switched. All right, the new one is now replaced. And uh, basically we're just gonna put it right back in there just like we took it out. All right, so the new one's in place. Let's go ahead and start working on the top part of the carb hat and getting this choke mechanism hole, which is right here. We're gonna go ahead and get this one plugged up with some JB Weld. All right, before I go ahead and um, epoxy this uh, choke hole here with JB Weld, we need to get the uh, choke plate off. I just get a Phillips, take these two screws out right here and pull off the plate and then pull out the bar. All right, that is now out. Pretty simple. So let's, look at, let's get a plug. All right, I went ahead and uh, just cut off a little slice of the JB Weld here. And basically all we wanna do is conform this steel, these two parts steel until it's a single color. And then we're gonna plug that hole right there. All right. So we got it all mixed up pretty good here. And all we're gonna do is provide a liberal amount of this and just put it basically inside this hole. 
Mind you, this has nothing to do with the gasket part of the two barrel. This faces just the atmosphere. So what we're doing is just bypassing that choke hole because when this is actually attached to uh, the bottom part of the carb and a carb hat goes on top here, like so, when the carb hat attaches to it, all the air that's being pushed from your actual turbos, you do not want it to go through that hole because you'll lose considerable amount of boost and it won't be referenced correctly. All right, so this is exactly what it needs to look like here. That's the top side, that is the rear end side. And most importantly, you don't wanna to put too much right here on this outside edge because that is where, let me grab it here. <sighs> this gasket goes. So you wanna make sure that it seats flush, just like that. Okay, so if you followed along all the way through the video, this is my method using uh, some of the Hangar 18 um, methodology to getting a blow through carb completed for boost. I didn't use a, a few of them, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna call it a day now. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the carb, and then once I get everything fired up and I got the air fuel ratio uh, gauge installed, then that'll determine my next step. Um, I will say I'll, I'll go ahead and block uh, this vacuum here. I'll put a cap on that. And um, I'll go ahead and probably shear off these later. It just kind of depends on how rich or how lean I am. And uh, this valve here too. Um, it's been reported you don't have to, but this does leak. Um, like for example, if the vehicle is to roll over, so we might have a vacuum pressure issue here. I'm not 100% sure yet, but taking the carburetor as it is and not doing anything to it with six to eight pounds of boost, you should be able to not do anything except the nitro fuel and plugging this, uh, this choke hole here and possibly removing the, uh, the rubber piece down here and the accelerator pump. And that's pretty much it. If worst case scenario, uh, I'll have to jet up. Um, I'll go ahead and add a part two to this video. But as far as getting a boost reference carb ready, that's a two barrel, whether or not it's Motocraft or Autolite. Uh, I believe this method of what I, what I just finished today that you got to see is all we're gonna need to do uh, to get this minimal amount of boost through this motor and everything to read correctly and to get these turbos uh, fired up. All right, so last but not least before we get all fired up is you wanna go ahead and put um, two um, either oil line or fuel line hoses or even brake hose works best and angle it up to wherever your carb hat, whichever direction it is, and go ahead and make sure you got a clamp or some sort of uh, attachment device to hold hold them here or if you want to get an ID OD brake line just to, to put down here in the air horns that might be best bet that's the route I'm going I'm going to go metal and then when you bend them up to the direction of your uh, carb hat uh, make sure that they're kind of produced together and also attached with a hose clamp or some sort of attachment device but this is pretty much it, uh, everything in a nutshell on how to boost reference your carb. Uh, again, this is for a two barrel Autolite, two barrel um, Motorcraft or, you know, it, with this type of apparatus here is gonna be my methodology on getting it boost, res, uh, boost referenced. Again, just a disclaimer, this is on how I'm doing it. So. Um, take all the necessary precautions and measures to make sure uh, your setup is to your liking and um, you know hopefully going forward this video helps you guys out too because I could not find at all anywhere uh, aside from just a few write-ups on forums on how to get this done again late in the future I might have to take out that diaphragm here and the accelerator pump I might have to uh, drill the hole in the uh, uh, boost power valve and up my jets 
maybe, I don't know. But considering I'm doing six to eight pounds, 10 of that, I should be fine exactly like it is today that you see. So again, guys, thanks for following along. Again, go ahead and subscribe, comment, help my channel out tremendously. Thank you guys uh, for continuing to support me. And until next time, guys, God bless.